The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we are the ones who've all along encouraged you to like and share them on social media and with all of your friends and neighbors, because if it's happening on the Treasure Coast, you'll hear about it on the Sue Ellen Sanders Show every weekend. And now, let's get started. Here's Sue Ellen Sanders. Welcome, and we're so glad you're here. You know, there's been a lot of stuff going on in our cities and also in our county and i thought if we wanted to get caught up on what was going on in st lucie county in the most positive direction talking about um, business talking about public interest talking about parks and everything the best thing to do was to bring in the county to talk about it so my guest today our County Commissioner Linda Bartz, who's been with us before, and also County Administrator George Landry. And I, I think this is your first like radio video appearance here, right? Yes, ma'am, it is. And thank you for having me. Well, and we appreciate you coming to talk about a little bit about yourself and um, what people need to know about you i mean you've been administrator for how many months um for uh, about a month and 11 days okay so not even months month <laughs> <laughs> so i'm really honored that you took the time to to come and and talk to us today um as i know and you know L linda's idea was to to get you to come and you don't really have to get up to speed so to speak on St. Lucie County because you've been a part of St. Lucie County and uh, the administrative team for many years. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, i um, blessed to be with the county for, for a little over 10 years now. Um, um, how that came to be was uh, uh, was serving in the in the military and, and had been serving for quite some time and um, my wife and I, uh, in 2011, um, we have six children and, and we came to Florida for a uh, vacation prior to me taking a little trip overseas. And uh, while, uh, while we were here, it happened to be in the summer of 2011. And, and when, we, when we left our three week vacation, and went back home to Michigan. Huh. Um, my, my wife says, my wife says to me, she says, you know, the rumors were always Florida in the summer was one of the worst places to be for the heat and the humidity. Mm -hmm. She goes, however, three weeks in July, it wasn't too bad. So she says, when, uh, after you leave, um, a couple of our kids, we of the six children, they happen to be seniors in high school and we're graduating this, this coming year that I was going to be gone overseas. She says, you know, when the twins graduate, uh, I'm probably going to you know, sell the house, pack up and move to Florida thinking, okay, really, you're going to do that with six kids while I'm overseas and, 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 and stuff. And sure enough, she did. She, uh, she put the house up for sale and, and she, she sold it and she packed up six kids and five dogs and moved to Florida. So when I had wow. gotten back from overseas, um, she had met me at my duty station and brought me here to Florida and showed us our new home and, and everything. And, and it was, I was towards the end of my military career. So it just kind of fast tracked and, 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 and we, we came to the conclusion that it's, that it's best that, uh, that I retire and, and grow up and get a real job. And so I was able to get a job with St. Lucie County and their human resources department, uh, as the risk manager. Um, and what a great opportunity coming into the county, um, from the military, um, as the county's risk manager, cause, uh, that position allowed me to, uh, get involved in all departments, work with administration, yeah. work with the board, um, and kind of get a feel for the entire county. Um, during that time, while I was while I was serving as the as the risk manager for in, inside of human resources, I also um, had uh, uh, wanted to coach football because I'd coached sports for my older children up in Michigan, and so I got involved in the Fort Pierce Pal Police Athletic Association and coached there on the Pop Warner, and uh, and really enjoyed uh, coaching the kids in the community there, which led me to Fort Pierce Central High School, and I coached some football as a volunteer coach That's there at awesome. Fort Pierce Central um, while working for the county and and. Uh, and got to know a lot of kids and and really kind of um took the same energy from from the military into public service here you know serving at the county it, it, with that job but then also working in the community and really getting to know our our community and, and getting entrenched in it and and fell in love with st lucie county and fell in love with the people of st lucie county and and i wanted to keep serving so with that uh, uh this board and and, and previous leadership uh, asked me to 
move into the utilities and solid waste department uh, and and help take over there and and we were able to get the utility moving in the right direction and going well and then when when the opportunity arose for county administration and you know a few nudges from a few people um, mm -hmm. you know uh, um, decided to go after it and I've been humbled to to be able to be serving as the county administrator and we have a great board and and a, and a great county team so it's kind of makes the job a little bit easier. So let me throw in just a little piece of how small uh -huh. the world is, Suon. So when I was elected to the county, George was working risk management. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of conversations. You and I just talked about the fact that we go back 25 years mm -hmm. when my daughter got married at Met Stadium. Mm -hmm. She lives in Michigan. She lives in the same place where George was. Wow, it is a small um, world. And talk about, and we're talking about a little tiny town in Michigan. So just uh, we and I, we had had some conversation. Um, he was telling me about a dealership that he had managed um, because my family is car business, and uh, when he told me where called my daughter of course she had never met george but she takes her her car to be serviced at that wow. same dealership small world it really small really world. a small world um and we're glad that your wife made that decision and i need to tell my husband this story because i'm trying to trying to proverbial uh proverbially is that is that a word no i don't know proverbial For, Proverbial, whatever. You know what? We know what you mean. Okay, all Proverbial. right. Metaphorically, let's just say metaphorically, drive the car right now when we talk about retirement. Um, and I love that your wife took charge, moved six kids, five dogs, packed up the house because she saw that St. Lucie County was the place that she wanted to be. Because I love people who make decisions based on their heart and feeling. And, you know, I, I'm kind of assuming that you coming from the service, that maybe you're the opposite of that. Because I could see you making the transition beginning into human resource, because they're kind of all about rules. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, um, leaving the military and wanting to still serve. So knowing that city or county government is is is, you know, similar, similar mm -hmm. types of service, just, uh, you know, different uniform. Um, <laughs> so uh, so when getting the job, I, you know, um, it is it's a lot of structure, uh, uh -huh. especially in human resources and risk management. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was very structured and uh, and and very focused on specific things. So it was an easy transition making that move and then getting to know all of the county departments, mm. a lot of the county staff, seeing how each individual department's mission supported uh, the community and, and the impact it had on the community was just something that, you know, um, from being on the outside in, you kind of, once you're in there, you're, you're seeing how much of a, an amazing impact that St. Lucie County has uh, with the residents and how much the employees mm -hmm. care and how dedicated they are to the, to the job. So, so, you know the the current role of now as county administrator is it's kind of it's awesome to be able to go around and brag about how awesome the staff is of, of st Lucie county and how much that it's the staff and the team the employees that really their efforts is what makes the county a great place you know to, to work and to live so it's a it's a it's a pretty pretty remarkable opportunity and also coming from the military background you're also used to dealing with the team yes yes so you're it's not I, 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 it's us as a group, the team. That is correct. And that's refreshing too. It is. And that, the team is what makes it happen. And there's yeah. no one person that can, that can do it. We all have our little, little piece of the puzzle and, and, and putting that whole puzzle together is really what, what makes it happen. And, and more importantly, it's the team. It's the ones that get out there every day in, the, in this environment and in all weather, right in the rain and the heat and, and everything during, during storms, post storms and get out there and do the work is, is really what makes it remarkable and to be able to just be a part of that and help try to clear some roadblocks for them so they can get out and do their job the, in the way it's needed to be intended is, is makes makes life easy.
Well, thanks to your fabulous communication team, because I'm also in communications, I've been able to find out from Eric Gill and Flynn Fidgen all the wonderful things that St. Lucie County does anything from hurricane preparedness to guiding the way through the storm, through uh, recreation activities, through library, through um, strategic planning, um, because St. Lucie County, as, as a staff, you could be doing all sorts of wonderful things, but if people don't know what you're doing, then it's like you're in a, a hole doing it on your own that is true that is yeah that is correct uh, eric and his team works tirelessly to to try to make sure that the communication is out there it's it's accurate and it's and it's quick and, and it's understandable to the public so they do a really great job getting that information out there it is so um the other thing that that i love about the path that you took to uh, the administrator is because of the fact that you have already been with St. Lucie County for 10 years, you know the people in St. Lucie County, you know the players um, that St. Lucie County, the, the administration needs to work with already, and you know the things that need to be done. You're not just like stepping in and trying to get used to it. And you've got, you know, I, I know Linda is part of the county commission team that you are working with and um linda can you give me an idea of you know like i I know the way it works is the county commission makes the big decisions and the county administrator and his team make the plan and they get the work done would you say that that's kind that's of what true? It, okay. Um, the commissioners are in charge of policy and uh, budget. Policy. And uh, the administrator then acts on those things, not just the administrator, but obviously the entire the team. county team. Yeah. team. So um, it's a great uh, group to work with. We all bring something to the table that's a little different. I like that George brought up the thing about the puzzle because I've talked about the puzzle for years and the fact that we are a large puzzle and everybody is a piece to that puzzle. So I don't care whether you are a facilities guy, if you are um, an administrator, if you are a assistant, the fact is, is we need every piece of that puzzle to make it work. Mm -hmm. So when we are missing a piece, we have a problem, which is why we always work to keep that running together. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, there are challenges. George, can I call you George? Yes, or, uh, yeah, my husband said you weren't the kind of guy that I needed to call Mr. Landry. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, you, you've got the challenge of having to possibly deal with two new faces on the commission every few years. So you are working with an ever changing commission. Um, and that in itself is a challenge. Um, while you're working with how many people do you have that's on your administrative and throughout St. Lucie County, how many people work for the county? So currently right now we have about 882 employees working for the county. Oh um, my goodness. And on the administrative team, um, there's me and then my deputy county administrator, Maite Santa Maria. And then we also have um, some support team, Lori Rocky, um, Katie Slay, and Susan White. Uh, they're all three kind of like executive uh, assistants up there that help. They basically run mm -hmm. the day-to-day -day operation mm -hmm. to keep us in check. So they're, they're a valuable part of, of the team. Um, and so for me, when, when I was looking at this, this opportunity in this role, um, you know, I knew that at some point in my career, I was looking towards administration. Um, however, I was looking towards it specifically to St. Lucie County because I, I had three main factors in mind for, to, 
in considering this and and first and foremost was was the board the board in itself and we've been blessed um we have we have an amazing board we have a great board of county commissioners they're they're very diverse in their in their thoughts but collectively they're all focused on doing what's right for st Lucie county and for the residents of st Lucie county they're always looking at every decision is geared towards what benefits the county we don't have a uh, any any of the commissioners that are, are are looking at their next future you know venture it's all focused on the people which yeah. is amazing right yeah. so that was one key factor the other factor was the employees the, the team and the county has an awesome team and then the most important was the people right the the residents that we that we serve and so those three things to me was the the greatest this provided the greatest opportunity so having having that made it the way to the, the place to want to be and, and where to hope to to ride out the rest of my career if if, if the board shall have me yeah as uh, and and what we're looking at as county administrators like like everybody's on the bus and you're driving the bus so to speak that is correct yes yeah. so so the so in, in a simple wide way is is the board gives us the the direction right they're the they're the they're the gps they're telling us where we need yeah. to get to and, okay. and stuff and then okay and then that's my job good. is to, my job is, is to get the right the right uh, the right team on that bus and, and, like and that. get us to get yeah. us to that point so yeah. so and and the great thing is the board is very clear and, and and concise on on the policies of what they said and what their priorities are and what needs to get done so that makes it easy for for us as the team of county employees to 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 get Get that mission accomplished because they they set out very clear goals and objectives and it's easy to to uh to put the plan together and and accomplish those goals two questions for you what is your greatest challenge personally through the this job and what do you think is st lucie county's greatest challenge so right now i think for me one of the one of the one of the big challenges in our forefront is is establishing um the right relationships with our municipal partners so you know as you're probably aware this the city of port st lucie went through a change similar to the county right in in in, in the mm -hmm. leadership level and and the city of fort pierce has has had uh, their city manager for quite a while and he's done an amazing job there uh, nick mims so mm -hmm. so building the relationship you know, coming in as a new guy and, and, and trying to establish those relationships so we don't miss any opportunity for where the boards and the in the in the cities and the county can work together to provide the best service without creating redundancies or double doing duties which end up having a you know costly impact to the residents. So mm -hmm. so making sure we establish that and, and, and get that working. Um, for the county in itself, I think it's uh, managing the growth. You know, this county's been uh, uh, fortunate because uh, it's like the the hidden secret uh, in the state of Florida, but I think mm -hmm. people are figuring out St. Lucie County and how amazing it is, and and we have a lot of a lot of folks wanting to come here and 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 build here. So it's it's how do we do it smartly and not overwhelm our infrastructure, overwhelm our services, and 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 create challenges for the residents that have been here for generations and and raised their family. So it's it's how to balance it correctly and 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 manage it in a way that everybody can gain from from that and, and we don't have any any negatives out of that deal what's the plan so it's you know it's looking at each and every individual uh development as it comes in and, and making sure that all the information gets put in front of the board and, and the board has uh um total knowledge of those and and, and working on their priorities right the their some of their priorities are are essential housing work for housing right we have uh we have a great demand for for teachers first responders a lot of you know we have a lot of jobs in the county that range in that uh, medium income of between the 40 and sixty thousand dollar range and so we have to create essential sustainable housing for them that, that they can work here and live here and raise their families here um, so it's keeping that eye on the ball and the board has set up pretty clear expectations on how they want to see this go so it makes it easy for us to work with those incoming developers and saying hey here's here's the priorities of the board and if you know you want to do business in st louis county we got to make sure that we're we're checking these boxes or it's not going to work for for us well when i moved here 32 years ago from west palm beach um, Port St. Lucie was the bedroom community for people who were working in West Palm Beach. And as a matter of fact, for a while, my husband uh, was, his uh, engineering firm was working out of West Palm Beach. And so he was commuting there for about a year. Um, and it was, uh, you, you, 
the housing was so affordable here. You know, it was like a big, happy surprise to us. And now we're finding people who have to commute from other places to able to be able to come to uh, St. Lucie County to work. I mean, you see the, the commute and the exits um, back up a little bit. So when you talk about infrastructure, you know, you're talking about the roads and the planning of the roads, you're talking about the green spaces, you're talking about, you know, the, the schools, you're talking about the, the services, the parks and recreation, the services that have to be in place to support the growth as well. Um, tell us a little bit about that. So those are great, great questions, and that's it. It's it's that very essential infrastructure. So you know, you start out with your 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 basic infrastructure. The most important parts, right, is your road network that can get the people around efficiently, effectively. Um, you're also looking at water sewer infrastructure, making sure that mm -hmm. we can serve all those developments. Okay, I knew and, I was not, missing some stuff. And not increase, you know, <laughs> not not have an impact on the environment. Um, with that, then then goes into your your parks and, and some of your your social atmosphere aspects, which is like your libraries and your pools and in, in your park structure. And then you got the schools. You know, we're blessed in, in the county. So our school district it does a fantastic job. It, it covers all of the, the entire county, manages all the schools, and they're always ahead of the curve. They're always thinking forward and they're always seeing that development and knowing right when to put a school in place and how to get there. So they do an amazing job. Are you saying that, that just because that's part of my husband's job? No, it's actually... <laughs> As I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, well, that you know, you know, you're here with that, but it's yeah. it's it's true. I, I've known Marty the entire ten years yeah. that I've been with the county because in our you know my first year here, we were mm -hmm. ended up in the in the emergency operations center together, yes. and that's where I met him. Right, um, uh, works tirelessly, does a great job, but you know, so it's 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 all those basic needs and making sure that we're staying ahead because the yeah. last thing you want to do is have you know thousands of homes come and then you don't have a way to move the people around or serve those right. those folks. You know, I think the city of PSL has done an amazing job. You know, as you stated years back, they started out as the bedroom community. They've grown in such a hmm. level, but they've the way they've managed it and how they've created their road network and how they've dealt with it, right? Because the influx was probably faster than they've wanted to right. see. And, right. and and that that leadership team over there between their council and their leadership team has done an amazing job managing that and, and setting those expectations. And, and we're having great conversations with how we partner and, and, and work together on, on managing because we see that it's impacting everybody, you know, with those with those things. So we're, we're excited about the future and excited about how 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 the St. Lucie County gets formed over the next 20, 30 years. I know one of the challenges with the road part of the infrastructure is that so a lot of the roads, some of the main roads are not funded through St. Lucie County. So it's like you don't have any control over that. That is correct. Yes, yeah, some of our roads are state roads and, you know, from Florida Department of Transportation. Um, the good news is, is they're seeing the impacts that we're having as well. So so as they see the traffic counts they and, and they get it and, and they're they're leaning forward, you know, we're looking at uh, widening Midway Road and, and possibly adding a turnpike interchange there. And that's a big part of their, mm -hmm. you know, their piece with that. Um, we're looking at a lot of different opportunities, but they're, they've been as they see the growth coming and, and they're seeing it as well here in the county, they've been a lot more aggressive on helping move those plans f faster than than we've seen before. So. We're starting to see a lot of synergy between the two cities, the Florida Department of Transportation and the county and, and helping to get those plans going and build those roads. I know they don't go as fast enough as people would like, but they're they're pretty extensive projects because, you know, when you when you widen a road or or do anything there, you're you're doing a massive stormwater mm -hmm. improvement, right? Because you don't want the roads to flood or you want to have that stormwater impacting other people in a bad way. So there's many layers to to just doing a road expansion. And um, people don't see that. They do people not. all they see is the inconvenience of the road being worked on. The they detour signs see, and the yeah, orange cones yeah. and, and wonder what's going on. Yeah. But uh, but we're doing a lot better job in, with our public works department in all fronts from both municipalities and and the county and the and F dot with with telling that story, mm -hmm. showing the, you know, stuff, the, the internet's been a great help because you can post a lot of that information out there, show the pictures, show the plan. So people can mm -hmm. see the layers of what goes into that right. and, and really help to, to, to have them better educated. Cause the more the citizens know, the better understanding they are and, and the more they can support and, 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 and be flexible when we do these things. The, the thing to remember for us 
who are residents of St. Lucie County and have watched the growth over the last 30 years is that we we want smart growth. We we want the growth to continue. We don't want to, you know, put signs up on 995 that say that say don't stop here or communicate that in any way. We want people to continue to come here, but we want to manage it. And I know that's what you said right at the beginning. And I know you have that that's one of your strategic goals is managing the the growth. So so let's talk a little bit about the plan and the future and and how it all fits together for people who are not just living already in St. Lucie County, but would like to come to St. Lucie County. Um, for example, people who may already own something in St. Lucie County, but they're snowbirds, and then they're eventually coming here for good. So we look at all those factors because we know there's a percentage of our population that that does live here, and then when it gets warm, you know, they they go to their to their other other home spots, you know, up in the north, um, Michigan, like Michigan, or, yeah, yeah. Michigan <laughs> or other places. Um, you know, and, and um, so and, and it's funny how how as as the years that I've been here, you know, when I first got here, I was probably one of those that that everybody else was like, you know, here's those those northerners coming down and 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 driving funny on our roads and and uh and they're in and out and using our resources and and now i'm going every time i see a michigan plate i'm like are they here permanent are they moving here when are they leaving you know things of that nature no i'm just kidding um but no they're just as important because you know they're investing in and in, in looking for their future you know here in the county so so making sure that that as we as we're, we're we're putting this plan together and the plan's ever evolving right it's a living document because it changes with economy it changes with with the val the volume of growth um so while we're looking at that you have to keep always in the forefront those that have been here and have established and and have invested here in the community to make sure that we're not having a, a negative impact on them while bringing in the growth so so there's a multiple factors you want to be accommodating to to new development coming in but you also want to be you know very sensitive to the existing people that have helped build this community and, and get it to where it's at today um one of the other key factors is jobs it's not just about rooftops you yeah. know um this board has been very um forward leaning and speaking on diversifying the county's revenue stream because you know as everybody knows a majority of all local governments come from the rooftops right come from the property tax that's paid and and as we learned in 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 past in 2008 how those impacts could have on services and and things mm -hmm. you know and jobs and everything in the, in the community so so this board has been very aggressive on saying hey it's not all about just rooftops let's get some businesses in here that have sustainable good jobs that can weather the economy that we can then you know uh, accompany with the home so that people can work here and live here and we have a sustainable resource so we're, we're diversifying that revenue stream so if we the more businesses we bring the less we have to lean on on our rooftops so that's been a huge uh, priority and goal for this board and we've been leaning forward hard on trying to bring good sustainable jobs to the community for example director director is one with the port right and mm -hmm. and, it, and they're growing so so they've been a great addition to st lucie county you know although some some you know they got off to a rough start because they mm -hmm. they got their feet underneath them and then COVID hit and and then they had to go through that so now they're coming out of, the, out of that side and you're starting to see more and more ships come in and more mm -hmm. and more small businesses are getting the the benefit of having those ships come in and, and getting those jobs literally that, their ships are things. coming in right oh yeah so so there um so that's happening we have some activity happening out at our airport and, and we're looking at those kind of businesses coming out to the airport that'll create good sustainable jobs um you know pursuit boats and maverick boats have been doing expansions and they're growing at an exponential rate here in, in the community creating great jobs so it's a constant look at it's not only just about a a big developer coming in to want to put three or four thousand homes in the community it's it's are there folks that want to come in and, and build their business here and we want to make mm -hmm. it an attractive place for business for the good jobs you know and have those great great opportunities for for our folks and for our youth that are going through our school systems you know they can go to school here they can go to irsc college here they can get you know technical certi certifications on on good manual labor jobs they can get a degree Things that ensure, but we want them to stay here and raise their families and work here and, and and have that type of that type of environment. And that's been kind of Fort Pierce's mantra and and Port, Port St. Lucie's mantra, you know, the county collective. And we want to maintain that while we while we grow. 
And Indian River State College does such a really wonderful job of being on the pulse of what's going on in St. Lucie County and on the Treasure Coast. And instead of providing classes and asking people to come to classes, they ask people what type of classes and they ask businesses, what type of what degrees do you need? Do you need? Um, and I know that's made the world of difference too. Well, St. Lucie County and really the Treasure Coast in general, you, you know, you're talking about uh, boating, you're talking about, you know, uh, leisure activities. Those are the things that attract people here. Um, but what keeps people here is is being able to do those fun things, um, the beach, the fishing, the boating, um, the whether the rivers or the beach and 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 work and send their kids to school and play um so talking about the playing end you know i love the fact that your background part of your background is that uh that you were a volunteer coach uh first for pal and then uh for fort pierce central because you probably see a whole different side of st lucie county that way you do. You you get to meet a lot of kids that that as they're going to school, you know, they look to recreation and they look to the sports as their as their their possible future as a way to get some some help with with college and things of that nature. So so it's very important that as we're growing that we keep an eye on our park system and making sure that we provide those opportunities for these kids as they're coming up, keep them off the streets and give them safe places to go to be able to to recreate and play, have the pools, have the libraries, have basketball courts and football and baseball state, you know, fields for them to go play at. Um, so we have a very aggressive parks department and, uh, and it's, and it's really interesting to watch them, um, and them as, as well as they work with the two, two cities. Cause it seems like when those three departments get together, the parks department from the County and the parks department from the two cities get to get together. If they have it their way, they would take over the entire County and, and it'd be parks and, and fields and things of nature. And, and they, they work really hard at it. And it's, <laughs> and it's pretty fun to watch and see and, and some of the synergies that they come together and the creativity they come with, with doing that, you know, and, and the awesome thing is, is, is the board is really all, both our board as well as the two cities are very, um, uh, forward thinking on that and leaning on I'm wanting to have that space so it's kind of like if we say we're going to put a few houses in the first thing that comes out is okay how many more parks are we going to have when's our next library how many more boat ramps are you going to put in because they they want to make sure mm -hmm. that we're we're meeting the needs and, and the wants of, of the people so when they're here they have a place to to recreation here um, they're very aggressive on keeping you know the Indian River Lagoon in in a high state of uh, of of desire so it's it's it, there's no there's no time that they're ever that 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 they're ever sitting idle. They're you know if we think we got a project that's about completed, the board has seven more for us to to jump in and do. So that's the fun part about it. If you travel and see other throughout the United States, other lakefront, oceanfront front property, you see a lot of of like Miami Beach or or even Palm Beach. Uh, the a lot of condos, a lot of. Uh, big business uh, a lot of um where you don't see the beach as much from across the street but in st lucie county the, it's kind of at an even keel where you know some some counties have height restrictions so the beach is always visible um what what does st lucie county have in place so similar, both the mm -hmm. county and the cities have height restrictions. Um, they do have requirements. They they have a they want the public to have access. It's it's very important that we have a lot of public beach access, you know, for our residents and for those that are passing by, you know, for tourism purposes. So they're very uh, um, very aggressive on making sure that we keep providing that space and maintain that space. You know, it, we do want the the restaurants. We do want some of that, some of those uh, opportunities for hotels. But there's there's spots for them to be that that still give us that access to the beach. You know, to the uh, uh, intercoastal waterway. Um, you know, they 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 love having the fact of a possible restaurant that has access that you can pull up on your boat, ride your bike to, or mm -hmm. walk to. But mm -hmm. we don't want to have that on every square foot of it. So it has to be in moderation. You know, you want to have that open space for the kids to play, but then you also want to have a nice place for, for you to go eat at this in the same 
same realm. So, so it's pretty nice when we go to look at it. They they look at the whole county border of 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 the beaches, the miles that we have, and and they're pretty strategic on how they want want that development to come along the beach. You're talking about the waterways, and I know that some in some areas, not in St. Lucie County, particularly, the waterways are kind of geared for people who have large, expensive boats. And that's one of the things that, you know, we've raised our children uh, tooling around uh, the St. Lucie River in a 19 footer. And, you know, that's something that is a whole different uh, lifestyle than uh, those, although you do see you know, you see, especially as a director is coming in, you see the big, the big ships, and you see the the fact that we do have the ability to have some of the bigger ships too. But it's nice that we also have a, a ability for boat launches at different county parks. And um, what what are some of the county parks that offer the river access? I know you never worked in parks and rec, so I'm right. putting you on the spot no, here. And Linda, you're welcome to chime in. No, that's terrific. So, so in, with inside the county itself, yeah. County Unincorporated, you know, we have uh, a North Causeway. So as soon as you go over onto North Hutchinson Island, mm -hmm. um, right after the drawbridge, you have the North Causeway Park, which has got four launches that are under construction. They're getting completely remodeled as we speak. So, so you should see some construction happening here in the next few months there, and that'll hopefully get reopened in the very near future um, that was impacted by the hurricanes. Um, mm -hmm. But that is a very popular place for for a lot of our locals to launch from because the smaller boats can launch there safely and, and, uh, and it can handle a lot of traffic. Uh, just down past that little Jim, famous little Jim's bridge and, and little Jim's uh, uh, boat and tackle shop across the county has Stan Blum, which is a large um, parking area which can accommodate quite a few people to launch their boats from there. Um, on the mainland, the city of Fort Pierce and, and the county partnered in Fisherman's Wharf right by 12A buoy, and there's uh, mm -hmm. it's called Black Pearl. There's some boat launches there. Um, and then the city has some along the river. The city and the county does have some launches that are along the river access, which can lead you out to the inlet into the ocean. So so we do have a good number of launches mm -hmm. out there. They're scattered around, but there's never enough. If you ask anybody in the county, yeah. there's, there's never <laughs> enough boat launches. right? And we agree, and, and yeah. we want them there. We want yeah. more boat launches because yeah. the small, like you're saying, the the young the young families, the the kids and, and, and stuff on the – 19 footers the 20 footers 21 that is st lucie county and mm -hmm. that's what we love you know we want to look out at the inlet and see 100 little boats out there tooling around and the fishing and that kind of stuff first versus, versus the big boats and the big condos because that shows what the treasure coast is and what st lucie is and that's what we want to keep mm -hmm. um tell I mean, that's what drew a lot of us here yeah was that family atmosphere the the recreation that we had there and i'm you're moving away from the I mic know, from me. I from know. Me. Um, Linda, how long have you been in town? I have been here since 85. So you, and that's that's about uh, five years before we got here. So you've seen a lot of transition too. I have, yeah. I have. Um, and, uh, you know, both of us, you know, we, uh, we raised our kids here. As a matter of fact, you were talking about your daughter um, being married at, what was the name of the stadium then? It was, Thomas J. White. It was called Thomas J. I White. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. She, so she was married at the stadium. Um, and we go back to the days of the Rainbow Festival and the different festivals. As far as um, recreational festivals, it, it seems like every weekend there's something going on in St. Lucie County. And they may not all be St. Lucie County sponsored, but you all do a good job of publicizing that what's going on in St. Lucie County. Um, what, what are some of the favorite things to you about like, so, so give me an example of your weekend, your downtime. What are the things that you guys like to do? Both of you. Yeah. There are so many things going on that you can, pick things out of the air. We now have a strawberry festival in Port St. Lucie. We have the oyster festival coming up. Um, I don't care what you are interested in. It's there. 
and it's family oriented. Yeah. So you can pack up those kids or those grandkids and say, come on, let's go out for the day. And we always have something happening. Um, I remember years ago trying to plan some of these things and saying we needed a countywide calendar. Mm-hmm. I remember, remember talking remember? about it. Remember that so conversation. That, so that we would not be overlapping. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. It's impossible. Because there's so many different things that there are going are. on. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the strategic plan. Uh, what are we looking at with the county strategic plan? What does it say and what are the goals? So, the, you know, the county's, the county's kind of... Uh, uh, vision is you know endless opportunity by design you know that's that's kind of the the mindset of the county so uh just recently in the past a uh, few board meetings ago you know the county looked at some of its priorities going forward into this next budget cycle and and some of those priorities were you know some focus on the essential housing affordable housing um infrastructure you know the roads the the actual county infrastructure the service the the facilities that we use to serve the public making sure that they're in a position to be able to continue on into the future and, and weather the, the climate changes and the storms, um, water and wastewater infrastructure, um, those kind of priorities. And then also, you know, looking at uh, shelters and things for our homeless, because, you know, we, we are seeing a little bit of an uptick in, in some homeless population. And, and we know that that some of our you know residents would would like to see some opportunity for that to, for places for them to go. Mm-hmm. So so there's been a lot of priorities set on on some of those some of those items for this coming budget year. And it ties into the, our, our strategic plan with the health and safety, the fostering community trust, things of that nature. So um, we got, we got uh, a plate full of items to, to work towards uh, in this coming year. How about the housing situation? You know, you, you, you kind of talked about that there's more homeless now, but even you, you're talking about uh, the, the, emergency service personnel and the teachers and the people who uh, yeah. who should make enough to um, rent or buy a home but actually don't anymore right and so you know when you look at that in these in in these communities that are popping up you know it, it's uh the the cost for for materials you know the cost for labor you know with inflation things are happening so in order to help that you know the the counties and the cities you partner with with some of these developers while while it might be providing some 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 space some land or some um help on different types of infrastructure that helps can keep those costs down so that's kind of some of the the plans that the county has put together um, some different task force and committees, you know, mm-hmm. they have a, a affordable housing uh, committees and task force homeless. Um, there's actually a, a four county coalition. Um, so this board, our board has met with the, the, the Treasure Coast, other other counties, you know, Martin, Indian River and Okeechobee. And at, at that four county meeting to talk about priorities and, and mainly a lot of legislative stuff the affordable essential housing was one of the big components to where there's been follow on meetings individually, you know, with with individual board members coming together to report back to their boards. And we're all working collectively on how do we how do we do that jointly? So it's not just one trying to do it and others working against. So right. So I think we've recognized that that with this growth, with what we're seeing, we want to make sure that that a percentage of it meets the needs of our of our current community and, and those that so we have some of it for. has to be affordable some it has yeah. to be or or or, or they're not going to allow it you know and, right. and we and we support that we want the board to put you know draw a hard line in the sand on that and, and they are so so it's it's pretty awesome so so these developers are knowing it and they're coming forth with those plans of a percentage of the homes being able to stay in that affordable range so they can't sell for for money that that you know the, the people that are working here can can afford Let's talk a little bit about how people who are listening and people who live in St. Lucie County can participate in the planning and in uh, working toward goals in St. Lucie County. You, you all have boards and councils and um, different opportunities that are usually published on the St. Lucie County website. We do. It's great. Um, so we do have the, the there's a lot of committees in in 
and supplemental boards that, that this current Board of County Commissioners has, and they post those out there for the citizens to apply to be to get appointed onto those boards by the commissioners, and, and that really helps steer some of these priorities and, and help with, with our strategic plan. Um, we also have a Citizens Academy that we put on twice a year to where we open it up and we hope to get 30 to 40 residents and we put them through a, uh, um, we'll, we'll say in a fun way, rigorous platform of, of education within mm -hmm. the county government. So they meet all of the departments, they tour a lot of infrastructure, a lot of places in the county, they go out to a lot of different areas and they kind of get an education on what all the departments and services the county has. And usually outside of that, they get more involved and they, they find a lot of the residents when they go through those things they find an area that they really like that they that they focus in on mm -hmm. and then they get involved in that part and though that feedback really helps drive us to the future because we you know when you're working you can kind of get wrapped up into what you're doing and, and you love to have that feedback from the community to know how that is actually working on their side of of it you know as the receiving end of it and, and you take that kind of constructive feedback and to help shape it going forward in the future so the citizens academy is kind of like an overview of everything that goes on in St. Lucie County. And is it free or is it it's like absolutely one time free. a year? Or? Uh, we do it twice. Um, so we, we do it twice. So we got some staff members from the county that are really dedicated because it's in the evenings, you know, and they mm -hmm. put it on and it usually runs for about uh, 12 weeks or so. And it's usually uh, uh, one one night a week, mm -hmm. every week for a few hours in the evening time. And, and they start out coming into the to the county meeting into the chambers where a governing meeting happens and they kind of get a little overview and then there's a whole curriculum of all the departments all the the different types of things the county's working on and then there's tours and, and different site visits um and and usually when they come out of it um it's it's pretty awesome because when they come in we ask them for what they're looking for out of the out of this academy and when we come out of it the feedback we get is just is just uh, outstanding because it's more than what they anticipated mm -hmm. and they usually like i said they come up with something that that they really like or they're really focused in on and they ask how do i do more and then all departments are always in need of volunteers or help or, or things of that nature so we can never have enough and people can find out that information either through the social media for st lucie county or th on the website on the, on the website, website yep yes. or, or they can they can they can reach out to their favorite communications person eric gill and, and yes. ask him when and he'll provide them with all that information yes he will or or just wait for his uh press releases to get to their mailbox yes. <laughs> um so so that's a good opportunity if you want to get involved too but um what what is like anyone can come to a county commission meeting and those are a couple times a month absolutely and they're always noticed um and we have uh an informal we have a morning meeting we have an evening meeting but i encourage people to come and participate in the meetings um but the the university helps those people who want to know more about how does your government work why are you doing this? Why mm -hmm. do does this department deal this way? And they come out with such a better view. The Citizens Academy? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And you know, and, and it's been um duplicated in some different areas of right, the county. Law I enforcement think, yeah. also yeah. has them. Yeah. So it really gives you a much better view we have so many people who move here from other states other counties we're unique mm -hmm. I, I we're definitely unique we are not like any other county as far as i'm concerned but in the same token there are things that we do much differently and that is the that's one of the ways to learn about mm -hmm. it as well as you mentioned the advisory board Mm -hmm. Those I know the that, library has one, Cultural Alliance yes. has one, um, and budget committee, uh, planning and zoning, uh, and all of those things, the meetings are also noticed and people can come Absolutely. to the meetings as well. So you can be in, as involved as you want to be, really. You can be, and I think what happens with a lot of the folks is they get involved, and then when they realize how much it is and how much of an impact that, that, that it's having, you know, um, they, they end up coming back and saying, okay, we're, you know, we, we, we got ourselves, it's almost like they've realized it's, it's a full-time job, you know, volunteering. A, there's never, there's never, you can never have enough help because this is your, you know, this is, this is everybody's community. And, and our job is to make sure that we're getting those services and resources out there. But really what drives it is the feedback that we receive from those residents 
to our commission to help guide our commission in, in setting that policy in that direction on which way we got to go. Do you also send out surveys and things like that as well? Yes, ma'am, we do. We, we About every other year, we send out kind of a survey and, and kind of get that, that, uh, that feedback. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what drove these recent priorities that we just talked about earlier in the show was the, the feedback we received was uh, we, we had about top, you know, like a top 10 list of things. And, and of that was the essential, the affordable workforce housing, um, and then the infrastructure and, and parks and recreation and, and water and sewer lines. So those, those priorities came out of the, out of that survey out from the, the people. Survey. Yeah. Uh, it, so if people want to get more involved in the county and in uh you know or find out more about the services uh, you know i i would tell people to go first to um the website uh which is www.stlucycounty.org.org i know you guys just changed from .gov to .org fairly recently um but also you know uh there's a, a facebook there's instagram there's probably Twitter, although I don't follow that. But a lot of those things you can get, you could use to get information about anything from parks and recreations to uh, government notices to um, information about weather activities. And I know St. Lucie County also has the weather alert system too. I know we just have a couple more minutes, but let's just touch about the weather alert system because I know when, when when inclement weather is approaching, I get a text and I get an email and sometimes I get a phone call. That is right, and, and we keep uh, improving on that system because we want to get the information out to the residents as fast as possible and the most accurate information because their safety is what's what's paramount. And, and we know being a coastal community and storms come and mm -hmm. we're coming into that storm season and, and and we have a great job, you know, we have a team that does an amazing job doing that and we want to make sure that, that the county, all the residents sign up and they can get that same information from the county website mm -hmm. or reaching out to the county directly and we can get them set up with that app. Okay, awesome. Um, and so, so it's really better for people to get the message in three different ways than to take the chance that they're not getting it at all. That is correct. Yeah, the yeah. more ways they can get it, the better, because sometimes it comes through as a text, a call, or an email. Also, if you um, like St. Lucie County's uh, Facebook page, that, that also, if you, you follow and like it, then you'll get more of the notices for everything. Um, for whether it be recreational activity or new parks. And, you know, I know St. Lucie County was part of the build for the, the new park out, uh, Kiwanis Park and on South Hutchinson Island. Um, and you can help to publicize information on classes, on library hours, on, on everything that you need to know about St. Lucie County. My guests today have been brand new uh, County Administrator, uh, George Landry. Um, thank you so much. And St. Lucie County Commissioner, Linda Bartz. I appreciate the two of you joining me today and hopefully you'll be able to come back and tell us some more good stuff. Well, thank you for having me and thank you to Commissioner Bartz for inviting me along. We'll see you next week with more. Thanks for listening. The Sue Ellen Sanders Show. Weekends on WPSL. Go to WPSL.com. Click on Programming Schedule. And you can look for Sue Ellen Sanders Saturday mornings around 7.05 and Sunday mornings around 7.05, sometimes even more.